Hey Browns fans, welcome to Browns All Access. Nathan Zagura alongside Bernie Kozar. And Bernie, obviously a week of change here in Berea. On Monday, the Browns relieved both head coach Hugh Jackson and offensive coordinator Todd Haley of their duties. What was your reaction? You know, one of, one of the first things I'm thinking about right now is you got to custom and set up for what we thought the 2018 season was going to be and kind of the excitement and anticipation and it for to be materializing halfway through it and being the situation we are, it's pretty disappointing. Think about week one when we play the Steelers. Your head coach is Hugh Jackson, your offensive coordinator, of course, Todd Haley. Your starting quarterback is Tyrod Taylor. Your number one running back is Carlos Hyde. And of course, your starting wide receiver is Josh Gordon. At this point, Tyrod, the only person left in the building, and he's not even playing after you play the Steelers the second time. Huge change, and I think we saw from John Dorsey and Jimmy Haslam them saying, look, we're not tolerating any more infighting. There's going to be no stuff going on in the media, things that I've seen in my six years, and I know you've seen a lot longer than that here with the Browns, and hopefully this is an opportunity to kind of clean things up, move forward, and get this franchise to winning. Whatever the reasons were that happened, whether it's infighting or not, ultimately players and coaches and everybody within this building, I think we should really all be just focused on that our record hasn't been good enough. And when you get L's in this business, when you get losses like we've had the last two Sundays, these are the ramifications that come about when you don't win in the NFL. You're absolutely right. Let's hear now from Brown's owner, Jimmy Haslam, and Brown's general manager, John Dorsey, on the move. Obviously, some uh, difficult decisions were made by the organization today. I think in any business, anytime you make decisions that affect people's lives, uh, particularly those people you work very closely with, um, they're tough. They're certainly no fun. Uh, I think we have to do what we think puts the organization and most particularly our players in the best position to win. And accordingly, we made those decisions. I think, you know, we have made Greg Williams the interim head coach and Freddie Kitchens, the offensive coordinator, and he'll obviously call the plays. There were certain things that happened. I mean, from an offensive production standpoint, there was, you know, minimization of offensive production. I think right now in the best situation is what we're attempting to do here now is create the best environment moving forward, not only for the players, uh, but for the, you know, the, the coaching staff as well. And, and that's what our sole focus is on right now is the second half of the 2018 season moving forward. And, and that, that's what we're focused on. And Bernie, obviously, sometimes these things aren't necessarily fair, but they are what happens. As you mentioned, it is a win-loss business, and the Browns record has not been good enough going forward. Greg Williams, who's presided over a defense that leads the league in takeaways, will be your interim head coach, was formerly a head coach with the Buffalo Bills, Freddie Kitchens, now your offensive coordinator. Um, Greg Williams has been there and done that. Our defense has been playing fantastic through the course of this year. The, the next eight games, and in particular, the Kansas City Chiefs, all by, albeit, are coming to town this week with one of the most dynamic, creative, talented offenses in the NFL. So I think it's imperative that defensively, the core and the strength of our team so far this year, that we kind of hold it together from that standpoint because there's definitely issues from the offense and special teams perspective. Yeah, and we heard John Dorsey talk about the offense not showing improvement. It seems like it had regressed, and I have to think the most important thing for this team going forward is the nurturing and development of Baker Mayfield, who will be your franchise quarterback, already is, and will be into the future. Let's hear now from the new head coach of the Cleveland Browns, Greg Williams. I enjoy being here. I've been in several organizations, uh, several buildings. There's an awful lot of good things here. Uh, we've got to win. That's what our business is about, about winning. We're a lot closer than a lot of people think, especially this year. And, uh, you know, especially about four of those games when it comes down to 11 points or less in the games, and we've got to make and got to find some ways to make a few plays to get us over the hump. And right now, all my focus and concentration is on this week. And then let's build weeks upon weeks upon weeks and uh, see how, how much we can. And we, I can't ask the players to look ahead if I'm looking ahead. You don't do that, okay? This business is too tough to do that type of stuff, and you've got to go. Today, let's take add up each day, continue to, to press and press on and do better each day, and uh, we'll wait and see how the outcome is. All right, Bernie, Greg Williams, as you said, leadership. He has that style on the defense where, yes, we've seen the, you know, see him on hard knocks. He's loud. He can be 
maybe seemingly even obnoxious, but talking to players current and past, they love him because Greg Williams is not afraid to take responsibility for what he does wrong. And I think that accountability is going to be a hallmark of his tenure as the interim head coach. Well, I would, I would hope that that accountability already resides within this building right here. That is, in a core good NFL team, one of the staples of, of, of necessity that you need is an accountability towards somehow, some way, getting the W's. When your head coach and your leader has that outlook, I think that definitely permeates down to the younger players, which is essential in times of crisis like this. We'll be back with more Browns All Access right after this. After the break, TJ Carey takes us through his journey to the Cleveland Browns, and head coach Greg Williams talks about his outlook for the rest of the 2018 season. Welcome back to Browns All Access. Nathan Segura, the legend of Bernie Kozar. Now, one of the additions this offseason, the quarterback spot was TJ Carey, who came to the Browns as a free agent, played his college ball at Ohio University, and he's got a great story. Let's learn more about it in our player spotlight, brought to you by Fifth Third Bank. He's back, he winds, he throws, Brake caught it at the 25, fumbled the ball, it is picked up by the Browns. Kirksey's got it. Big hit there to get that out of there as it was T.J. Carey who knocked it out, Doug. The biggest thing was football was very big in our family. And watching my three older brothers, um, my oldest brother went to De La Salle High School, which is in Concord, California. And I would always ask my brother before the game, Eric, can I be the ball boy? He'd be like, man, go ask coach. And so it was always fun being the ball boy, being the water boy, and, and just running on the field. and and having that excitement of going to the game to watch your older brother play, seeing the energy that was felt there, to me it was only right to follow suit. And from that standpoint, there was nothing that could get in my way of achieving that. Ball deflected and intercepted, picked off by Carey. Travis Carey, very, very athletic play. Fast forward to senior year, now we're trying to look for schools to, to go to and uh, I took a leap of faith and I went to Ohio University and it turned out very, very well. Dominate 03! One, two, three! Dominate! And then my parents moved to Cleveland to say, you know, they're gonna watch me for my last year of football. And we're sitting in draft night and I'm thinking like, it would be crazy if I went back to Oakland. And about 30, 40 minutes later, we got the call from Dennis Allen saying, do you wanna be a Raider? and we blew up you know we had so much fun that night it was just so real it was just something that you really couldn't imagine happening right how many times do you see nfl players get to play for their hometown i mean it's very few and it's funny because about halfway through my last season in oakland me and my wife are talking about free agency and we're talking to my agent and we're just bouncing off questions and I'm like, babe, it'd be crazy if we went back to Cleveland. And we jumped at it. And it's been a blessing ever since. When I first met Coach Williams, it was a little off. And I was just thinking like, is he like this every day? Come on! And I didn't know I was shocked, right? And so I'm, I'm calling former players that's played here and played under Greg and, and they're like, yeah, man, he's like that every day. Get ready. <laughs> that is good! It's fun to be around because you're always excited to see what's going on throughout the day. And it's like, man, what is he taking? Because I need some of that. Come on! Bam, 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 bam! And then the scheme. Um, Coach Williams' scheme is, is very untraditional, I can say. It, it challenges your thought process of how you play football for so long, right? And you, you think it's like, nah, this is not gonna work. But you're not in the mind frame that Greg is in. And, and I can say that he knows offenses so well that his scheme may seem off, it may seem unorthodox, but it works. That gives you the opportunity to go out there and play free. And so I had a lot of fun and uh, the transition so far has been great.
Obviously very happy to have TJ Carey here who has played very well for the Browns, especially of late in that nickel cornerback role. Clearly a huge fan of Greg Williams. And when you have a guy like TJ and probably the whole defense that loves Greg Williams, now that he's the head coach, how important is it to have that kind of buy-in? I think the buy-in is imperative, but also the fact that Greg Williams talks so much about how the front end, the pass rush, has to play a part of the defense like the back end, the pass coverage. Injuries happen in the NFL. Having a veteran like T.J. Carey in there at halfway point of the season when we've had some injuries like this, to have a veteran that could come in there, make plays, and hold his own, definitely a benefit for the Browns. It's huge. I mean, you think about last year, had the Browns lost two corners, it would have been a disaster. This year, you've already lost two, and Money Mitchell and E.J. Gaines has missed some time, and this defense continues to play well, continues to take the football away as they did twice on Sunday against the Steelers. Now, there's still eight games left, Bernie. There's a lot of football left for this team to get rallied behind Greg Williams. What do you think should be the goals for this team in these final eight games? I think to have a positive next eight games, second half of the season, it is so imperative that from a player perspective and a coaching perspective that they don't think about seven games from now, eight games from now, not thinking about December. What do I do today to put myself in a position that Sunday afternoon at one o'clock and the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be here, that I could be the best I could be to help this team win? If each person individually looks at it as a collective challenge of what could I do today to get better for tomorrow, we'll be okay. Baby steps is what the Browns need to do. Focus on small steps, and hopefully that starts on Sunday with a good showing against the number one offense in the NFL, the Kansas City Chiefs. We'll be back with more Browns All Access right after this. Offensive coordinator Freddie Kitchens was the starting quarterback for the Alabama Crimson Tide from 1995 to 1997. How many yards did Kitchens throw for during his college career? Is the answer A, 2,467, B, 4,142, C, 4,668, or D, 5,724? Offensive coordinator Freddie Kitchens was the starting quarterback for the Crimson Tide from 95 to 97. How many yards did Kitchens throw for during his collegiate career? Well, the answer is C, 4,668. Kitchens played in three bowl games for Alabama and ranks ninth in career passing yards for the Crimson Tide. Welcome back to Browns All Access. Nathan Zagura, Browns legendary quarterback, Bernie Kozar. And Bernie, we spent a lot of time talking about the interim head coach, Greg Williams. The new offensive coordinator is Freddie Kitchens, who came to the Browns from Arizona a year ago. And Freddie Kitchens played quarterback himself at Alabama. How do you see a guy who's a quarterback by trade going into this play calling role, working with our young quarterback, Baker Mayfield? Well, I think having a, a Coach Kitchens and having him be a quarterback by trade in his past definitely helps. Once you're a quarterback and you play quarterback at the major college level, um, you understand time management, clock management, play calling, personnel groups, motions, shifts, things of that nature. I'm not really concerned with him from that standpoint. but. The, how it affects Baker Mayfield is to be determined, and the most important question, as we've talked about in previous segments, how it matures around him and how it handles around him these next couple of games in particular. Let's hear from the Browns' new play caller, Freddie Kitchens, brought to you by Papa John's. You know, I'm very excited about the opportunity. Um, always wanted the opportunity, but not under any circumstance, under these circumstances. Um, but I'm here to do a job, and I'm going to do the job. You know, we want all of our players to see, uh, you know, growth uh, from everything from the line to the receivers to the backs and, of course, the quarterback. And all we want out of Baker and out of everybody around him to keep their head down and work continually every day and try to get a little bit better every day. That's been our mantra since we've been here and it's going to continue to bear a mantra. Just get a little bit better every day and then look up in three, four, five, six weeks and see where you're at. You know, I haven't had to work directly with him, um, but now I'm getting to see that side of him. So, I uh, know it's, it's a great relationship. He's a guy that he's very honest and he's upfront about a lot. So, I expect it to be uh, something similar to that. He's a very good dude, a uh, very good guy. Uh, we appreciate him in the running back room. And again, like, we, like I said before, we're going to fight for him. We're going to do everything we can. 
um, to help his his office come alive. He's certainly in the, involved in the game plan. He's been involved in the game plan, and sometimes situations dictate that he doesn't get the ball. But of course, we're always trying to get the ball in our playmakers' hands, and he's certainly one of the playmakers. And um, you know, I think we've got a significant number of guys that can make plays. But uh, you know, he's definitely one of them. I know we as a group is behind uh, Coach Kitchens, uh, and, and we're gonna you know do everything he asks, whatever it is, again. The number one thing I'd like to bring is a win and one more point than them. And that's all. I don't, I don't care about any stat other than the win. And that's just how it's always been. Bernie, we hear from Freddie Kitchens there. You've got now Ryan Lindley, another guy on the staff who played quarterback in the NFL. Drew Stanton has a longtime veteran. Ty Rod's a longtime veteran. This whole group, they say it takes a village. Does it take a village to help a young quarterback, and how important is that coaching he's going to get over these final eight games? Well, the coaching is imperative to it. This is definitely not an optimal situation. Again, you don't want to go when you take a quarterback number one and have these wholesale changes basically halfway through his first year. You have good, capable people coming in, though, to try and help them. Sometimes I think it's too much for young quarterbacks to have too many people in your ear. So it's imperative, I think, for a quarterback, especially a young guy, to have himself mentally ready, but to come in with just a somewhat of a decent game plan, but not try to be all things to all people. Don't try to do everything, especially coming out early in this game. they got to figure out the core of what we do well and rely on that against the Chiefs starting this Sunday. Now, speaking of one of the things that we do well here, well, we know Allie does it well. It's the Social Minute, brought to you by Giant Eagle. What's up? I'm Allie Raymond, and this is your Social Minute, where we show you the best of the best of what happened on social media this week. Kicking off our Halloween extravaganza with some of your costumes. Fans sent in on social media pictures of them dressed up as Baker Mayfield, John Dorsey, Bud Light Fridges, and our favorites. Bob Wiley. This Browns fan made a bet with his very pregnant wife and had to come through on Halloween. From hat to mustache to polo, she pulled it off and added a couple set hooks. But our favorite was Bob Wiley's own granddaughter who dressed up as him for Halloween this year. And lastly, Jarvis Landry got a little spiritual on Halloween. He dressed up as a pope. <laughs> All right, Jarvis, bless them. I'm Allie Raymond, and this was your Social Minute. After the break, new Browns head coach Greg Williams talks about his outlook for the final eight games of the 2018 season. Welcome back to Browns All Access. Nathan Zagura alongside Bernie Kozar and Bernie. Eight more games. I just want to see this offense score points, match the defense, and see this young core continue to develop. What do you want to see in the second half of this season? Well said. I, I was going on maybe the other side of that equation. I'd like to see us from a player and coaching standpoint, take it a step at a time, take it a day at a time, really just take it a game at a time. When you get in these tough situations, and again, not to want to get over philosophical but when you get into tough valleys in life you know fighting your way out of it doing the best you can um, worrying about the long term right now may make mistakes in the short run i really want to see us just know and think about what i have to do to be successful productive and win sunday at one o'clock absolutely start with good practices and then go out there against the chiefs on sunday well what does the interim head coach greg williams want to see over the final eight games i sat down with him take a listen here with Browns head coach Greg Williams and Greg obviously a little bit of a crazy week but now that you have a few days kind of in the seat how's it been going? You know when you've been in it as long as I have uh, you never say that uh, well I'll never see something like that again you know it's the third time I've been through something like that where you know I've been on a staff where they've made a change during the season you just scratch your head and uh, but you got to keep on going. Presiding over an entire practice, what was that like for you? There's really not a whole lot of change for me in that respect because even you know from the time before I was a head coach and a head coach and back doing the things I've been doing is is that I've always kind of perceived I'm the head coach of whatever I'm doing, and then uh, we've always on uh, from a defensive standpoint tried to set the tempo for practice, try to set the tempo for meetings, try to set the tempo for the building. You know we've always kind of been that way, uh, so. It's been fun to see the uh, the offense ratchet up a little bit, compete a little bit more. The last two days of practice, I've 
really um, couldn't have enjoyed it any more than we did. And I think they would tell you the same thing too. Uh, let's go out and compete. Let's get away from all the other mayhem. Let's go out and do what we do best in the world at what we do or at the top of the profession at what we do and have fun doing it. When the fans come to First Energy Stadium on Sunday and you want them to say that was a Greg Williams football team, what does that mean? Well, the big thing is with, with how, how physical we play, how hard we play, what kind of effort we play, how tough we play. There are some coaches that accept less than that. I don't, I'm not very tolerable of not playing as hard as you can, as fast as you can, and as tough as you can. And the ownership is out there on, you know, from a player standpoint, they all love each other and trusting each other that they're all doing that together, then production turns out to be pretty good. But whenever, when there's a few plays of indecisiveness or maybe not full effort, those are hard to stomach. All right, Bernie, you heard from Greg Williams there, and he does not start his tenure off with a very easy matchup. The number one offense in the NFL, the Chiefs, scoring 36 points a game come to town on Sunday. Yeah, not an easy task to, to start out with. That being said, Kansas City is so talented not just offensively, special teams, uh, defense, playmakers across the board. This is the type of game where guys can get intimidated if you look at all the weapons that they have. Come out, play good physical football, do what you do good. You got to figure out somehow, some way how to win. And what better way to make a statement that things truly are different here in Cleveland than to go out and tame the high-flying Chiefs this Sunday at First Energy Stadium. For the latest on your Browns, keep it tuned to cleanbrowns.com, the Browns mobile app. Subscribe to all of our social media channels and the Browns YouTube channel. And for the latest on the legend to my left, go to kozar19.com. Thanks for being with us for another edition of Browns All Access and let's go Browns.